we, we lose face of this. We, we, we have a spiritual church, right? Don't we? Uh, we're part of a spiritual alliance. Pastor Chris, Bruton, and Norval Hayes, and all these, these great men of God and women of God. And I think a lot of times we get, we get spiritually lazy. Amen. Or we get so dull in the spirit that we just come in and expect everything to work, right? Instead of getting hung. You know, here's the thing. How many of y'all remember when you first got saved? How hungry you were for God. You remember when you first signed up for IBTC, Sabrina Harris, and how exciting it was till you had to start doing homework, and you started to do writing papers, and, and how it, it wasn't as exciting about when you're doing how to study the Bible. I got really excited doing that one. And, um, you know, I was like, oh, geez, can I fly an airplane do something? You know, I used to make paper airplanes and fly them at the teacher, you know. But, I, you know, you got what we got to do. Here's the thing I want to ask you tonight. Are you still, are you hungry or are you satisfied? Amen? Are you still hungry? Do you want more for what God has for you? You want to be delivered? You want, you want more? Uh, you know, the atmosphere is changing now, right? Do you want that or you want everything to be the same? Let's get into it. Can we have a little church talk tonight? Amen? I ain't preached on a Sunday night in a while, so I just want to have a little church talk. You know, I talked about a few weeks ago how that, that used to, when my grandmother would take me to McDonald's over on Tower Boulevard when I was a kid, that was the greatest meal I'd ever had in my life. Amen? There was nothing better than a Big Mac just oozing out with that orange sauce and French fries and, and a Coke, right? And I'd get the Coke in one of those magical glasses. You remember? It had the cook, it had, the, had Ronald McDonald on it. Some of y'all even know who they are. It had the Hamburglar on there. Remember that? And, and, and Karen, I used, to be, I used to be really excited about going to McDonald's. I don't get excited about going to McDonald's no more. You understand what I mean? Uh, you know, I, now you talk about Longhorns, Chops, Maggiano's, I'm in, right? But McDonald's ain't saying. But what happened is, you know, we got to get that hunger back. We become satisfied that, that, that that's what's expected. You know what? When you go to, when you go to uh, Nairobi and you come back through the airport, if McDonald's is all they, I'm going to tell you right now, McDonald's is the best thing since sliced bread. When you get hungry and you ain't had a burger in a week, I would take, any, I would take a checkers burger, amen, or a Sonic burger. And I don't like either one of those, right? But a Big Mac is really good. But here, at, and I'm going to tell you something else that's really good, is how many of y'all see them little crackers, the Lance crackers in a pack? You'll buy them every once in a while. You'll eat one, throw the rest of them away. Not in Africa. Those are the best thing. They're like desserts. They're like little Debbies. They're so good, right? But what I'm telling you is, you remember how excited you were about worship, how excited you were about coming to the house of God, how excited you were, oh, maybe Bishop, uh, you know, Sarno's going to be here, or some of the other. We're going to have a great time. Lord, now we come in and we're just, okay. We're okay. Here it is again. I found the people with the most options are the most demanding, okay? Let me explain. Most people today decide to go to church based on the series that's being preached or who's preaching or who has the best coffee, right? Only the spiritual full, if you're, only the spiritually full people have these options. Like, they've already got everything. I'm going to tell you this. I don't know about you, but we have trouble during the week, do we not? Amen? I don't, I'm a pastor and I never have any troubles. No, I'm going to tell you. There's always, you got 150 people, amen, there's going to be trouble around there. But only the spiritually full are this way. But if you're in highly pursuit of God and highly pursuing God, then you're going to be hungry for God. You're going to come in every service, demand, you know, tonight was something new. People were starting to laugh. I love when people get in that laughing spirit, amen. They start rejoicing and getting all excited about God. Those are people that are hungry. Now, other people may look at them and say, you know, what's wrong with them? Well, guess what? You used to do the same thing they do, but now you done got so lazy because you're all spiritually uh, sophisticated now, right? Amen. I don't need it no more. I'm going to tell you this. Whenever I, whenever I get too big for my britches and I don't feel like worshiping no more and pursuing God, then I need to sit down and quit. But we got to get that desire back. We got to get that hunger back. We got to get, we got to get that, uh, that, that, what you call it, rah, like Pastor Chris. It's like we got to get that unction back in us that we, want, that we desire more. I don't want just to go to Kenya one time. I want four times. I don't want just one building. I got 15 acres. You know what I'm saying? We can never be satisfied where we're at. Right? You know why marriages don't work? Because people get satisfied with the status quo. Me and my wife, it's new, it's exciting. Every single day, I feel like I'm 18 again. Come on. That's why you got to do church, right? 
My kids are gone. I'm like, y'all going to stay gone. Don't come on back, amen, because there ain't no room in the end. I got one dog in the upper room, one dog in, in this room, and I got a gym in his old room, amen. You ain't, d- just go somewhere else, right? So, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, you, you know, some of you that have been in the way a long time, you got to find new ways, amen, to get creative in your worship. Does that make sense? You gotta find new ways to pray, Christina. You're a prayer warrior, but you gotta be as hungry today as you were yesterday. You gotta be a hung. You know, we we're going to Africa, and we're going we're gonna be praying every single day. But we gotta be as hungry here as we are in Africa. Does that make sense? So, but only a spiritual fool have these options. Hunger is interesting, isn't it? Have you ever been hungry a little bit? I'm not, none of us have ever been starving. I don't think some of you may. I don't know. But hunger is very interesting, and I can talk about it. Because I'm hungry most of the time. That went over everybody's head, didn't it? I'm not kidding y'all. I could eat 24-7. And, and what I try to do is, make, I just all I do is try to control that hunger but so I, don't, I won't be as big as the stage up here, right? But I'm hungry most of the time. But, but I want to get that hungry about my Lord, amen? And, and I feel like sometimes we're there, but we want to get more. I'm going to tell you this. I always want something fresh, new, and exciting. You know, you know what I'm saying? When I was putting this together this afternoon, I said, God, I want something that's new. I don't want nothing that's old. I don't want the old, same old, same old. I want something that's going to fill me up and satisfy me. I want to pursue you, God. I want a better message. I want to be a better pastor. Amen. I want to be a better worshiper. I want to be a better evangelist. I want to, I want to be hungry for you. I want to see God do greater things. I don't want to be sitting still and sitting here just enjoying what we got now. Does that make sense? I want, everybody say, I want more. All kidding aside, I'm going to tell you this. It moves people to do strange things, right? Hunger moves people to do strange things. If you're hungry, you'll, you'll do something. Hey, it, I'm not, don't raise your hand. But think about it. If you've ever been hungry, you'll do something to get food, will you not? Garrett will tear I'll try to hide the, the Twinkies from Garrett, and he will pursue like there's no tomorrow to find them Twinkies, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. What did you do with them candy bars you bought? Ah, what were they? Zebra cakes, that's what it was. Yeah, I couldn't think of it, man. But he was going to find it. And when you're hungry, it'll make you do strange things. You asked some of my missionaries. We were coming back from uh, Africa the last time. You know, they were all dragging. I'm like, y'all do what you want to do. I'm finding me a hamburger joint. Am I right, Christina? I yelled at Christina. She's like, I think Bishop yelled at me. I said, yeah, I'm trying to get a burger, man. I'm hungry. I've been eating chicken and cabbage all week, right? You know, and I'm going to tell you, how many of y'all were in the world last week? You ought to, you, listen, nobody? I was, well, listen, you ought to be hungering. And when you come here on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, you ought to have a desire, amen, to get it. And I'm going to tell you, you better kick somebody out of the way to get what you got to get. If you're in my way, I'm going to worship you. Just like the girl was up here while ago, Lynch was. Like, she's like, get out of my way. She was kicking down and saying, get out of my way. Hallelujah, I'm coming. You know what I mean? I'm hungry. If y'all ain't, I'm going to get mine. Lynch, that's why I'm when I want a cheeseburger after a missing trip. There's no doubt. So hunger moves people to do strange things, doesn't it? Might make you worship, might make me throw water, might make me punch somebody in the chest, whatever it is. But watch this. It it moves people to do strange things. Stealing is a no no in the word, isn't it? Thou shalt not. Is stealing a no no? So let me ask you, but, but watch this. But Solomon seemed to show sympathy to a thief who was stealing because of hunger, did he not? And even though the thief must repay what he's stolen, Solomon said the man wasn't despised even in his own community and family in the kingdom. Did he not? What Read it. Look at what Proverbs 6 and 30 says. I'm going to show you. I'm going to try to build this and you'll get it. People do not despise a thief if he steals to what? When he is what? So what happens is, all right, so let's go slow. People do not despise a thief if he steals to what? Not to, I'm not stealing a TV because I want a bigger TV. I'm stealing, one of them, one of them, I'm stealing a piece of chicken because i got to feed my family, right? Amen. Now, is it still wrong? you got to repay? Yes. But guess what? There's some sympathy toward that, right? Watch. I'm, I'm going to build this. I'll see it. Unusual behavior is, is, is accepted when a person's hungry, is it not? You ever met a homeless person that's hungry? You know, they come up and they say, I want some food, amen, and they're acting a little different. Amen, people, it's, 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 it's accepted, I would think. Spiritual hunger uh, in people is the same way. They're going to be a little bit different, right? 
If they're starving, they're going to tell you, get out of the way. I'm going to worship. Amen. I'm going to shout a little bit. I'm going to act a little bit different. Hungry people do, hungry, do weird things. You know, stuff you wouldn't even eat. When you go to these third world countries, you give them a, a, a piece of, like those lance crackers. That's like gold to them, right? We throw the things away. We let them get stale. Don't even eat them. They don't waste a morsel of food. You know what they told me when they were cooking food and we weren't eating it all? They said, Bishop, we will cook less because we do not want to waste our food. Right? You see what I'm talking about? Here we throw away having abundance. And that's the way it is today. We got church on every single corner. We got praise. We, got, we turn on the radio and get any kind of praise music. But we're not pursuing God because we're not hungry anymore. We're not going for it. You know, how, well, Bishop, can you see it? Yeah, I, I can. You know, Israel was here the other night. Israel Baku. Ba, how do you say his name? Bashu. He was here the other night. He goes, Bishop, the last time you were here, you had tons of young people. And they did a skit. He goes, where are all the young people? I said, they're not here. And he said, well, why? You know what God said? You ain't hungry enough. You're not going for it anymore. You're satisfied with everybody telling you it's just the way it is. Ah. Oh, well, well, how come we don't? Well, well, Bishop, why don't we have this? Uh, you, know, you know, it's just the way. No, it ain't the way it is. You either pursue, you're either hungry, or you're dying, right? I'm going to tell you this. It, it, it may, hey, when you're hungry, you may offend people. Get out of my way. I got to get a burger, right? Amen. When you're hungry and you're worshiping, you're pursuing God, other people will critique your gift. They're going to wonder what you're doing. Watch, I'm going to build a case. So spiritually hungry people are the same way. When they're hungry, every, everything else gets thrown out the window. Whatever Lynch was pursuing a while ago, she's going to get it whether y'all like it or not, right? Amen. Don't put no pile on the windowsill for her because she's going to get it, right? Amen. Because she's hungry, she's pursuing and there were others. Rachel was up here pursuing God. So I watch people. I watch shy people. Where, where's my sound lady? Tanya, where are you at? I watch shy people, amen, get loud. And you see what I'm talking about? I watch passive people. Where are you at, Tanya? Become aggressive, right? I've seen people that wouldn't even do anything. Amen. Now all of a sudden they're exploding in the kingdom of God. Why? Because they got hungry for the Lord. Amen. They got hungry. Jamise, where hey Jamise, where's Jamise at? Come on, Jamise. I see, hey, I seen people who don't even talk to you, amen. Get up here and go, ah, oh, you, know, you know, I came from the ghetto, amen. Come on. I ain't never heard her say, I ain't never heard her say two words. Next thing I know, she's blowing up in the Holy Ghost preaching. Don't critique her gift. Oh, Jamise, oh. My expectation, oh, what's the least going to do? All right. Oh, she's just going to preach out and blow everybody away. That's what it is. So when you get hungry, you can do things you never thought you would do. And it's acceptable, is it not? Amen. It's acceptable when it's hungry, right? Come on, watch. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Look at this. So we've seen shy people become loud. That's my, my new daughter-in-law. Huh? Passive people, right? Become aggressive. And, it, and complacent... I know complacent people that used to just sit still, never do nothing, but now they're passionately pursuing Jesus now. Doesn't that amaze you that when things come their way now, they don't run away and hide? They're like, hey, God's got this. Praise the Lord. Tim Sammons, where is he at? Right there. How oh, I'm going through a season, but guess what? I'm giving it all to the Lord, Bishop. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know God's got it. Now he's got, he's got more in abundance than he ever had before. His wife, my God, somebody ought to get, come on, excited. This time, not long ago, they both, they, they both didn't have a job. They both didn't have no income. Now they're making so much, she's able to quit, and she can volunteer for the church again. When you passionately pursue God and you get hungry, you won't be physically hungry no more. My God, somebody. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? You ain't complacent no more, are you, Timbo? Amen. Come on. You start seeing those complacent people become extremely bold in their faith. Doesn't it excite you to see that? Everybody say it's a beautiful thing to see. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it is what? For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a what? He is a what? He is what, Tim? A rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Not those that deal you sit on a pew and say, hey, what kind of series is this of God? My series tonight is, it's going to be in the Word of God. The coffee I got is whatever Maxine put in that thing in there. Amen. And if you're hungry, I have a piece of chicken for you at the end of church tonight. 
Amen? He is a rewarder of those who what? Seek him. Do you remember in the Bible, I was telling Venus outside, have you ever heard of Hannah? Any of y'all ever heard of Hannah in the Bible? Hannah? Everybody say Hannah. Hannah lived this out when she appeared to be drunk before the priest, but she was actually desperately praying because she was hungry and praying for a child. Let's look at the Bible. Let's just read a little scripture. Is that okay? 1 Samuel 1, 13 and 8 through 18. You ready? Now Hannah spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved. Now this is good. But her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was what? How many visitors do you think come in here and think we're all loaded up? Huh? <laughs> they thought she, he thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, what did he say? How long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you, right? But Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord. I am a woman, remember godly sorrow today? I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but I have poured out my soul before who? Now watch this. 16. Do not consider your maid servant a wicked woman, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken until now. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked for. And she said, Let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went away, went her way, and what? So the woman went away, her way, and what? And her face was no longer. Why? Because she pursued God. Amen. And she, and she pursued God with her heart. And, and even, even when he came, she was, so, she was probably like Lynch up there trying, you know, right, worshiping him. And he was like, what's this woman doing? She must be high as a kite. Just like the apostles on the day of Pentecost, everybody thought they were drunk, but they were drunk with a new wine. She was really pursuing God. And, and she was hungry. And she was believing God for a miracle in her life. And the Bible says, so the woman went her way and ate. You're going to get your dinner and you're going to get fed by the way you pursue God. How hungry are you? How much do you want to be fed? How hard do you want to pursue? How far do you want to go? And how far do you want to take this thing? Do you want to hide in the sand or do you want to get glory every day? You see what I'm talking about? Remember we talked about this morning, renewing your mind every single day, pursuing God, getting a hunger that's in your, in your spirit that you're never satisfied where you're at, but you're only satisfied at where you're going. Does that make sense? Come on. Her face was no longer sad. Because when you get an answer from God, don't you really, don't it really, didn't it touch you? Do you like, oh man, I got my answer. I feel peace. Eli understood, he understood her hunger and she was excused for it. Does that make sense? So, this kind of hunger was a desperate pursuit of what, what God's word is revealing to us. And I call this type of hunger a fire inside. Remember, I got, what was that song David Prince used to sing? I got a fire shut up in my bones. That's a fire burning inside of me. Then I don't want to be like everybody else. Amen. I'm not satisfied. I was teasing year two students on our group me the other day because every single one of them are quitting and not going on to year three except for one, right? So I was like messing with them. And, and, and the reason I was doing that is because I don't want them to lose that desire and I don't want them to lose that fire. And I know some of them have already signed up for different ministries and going different ways. But if you don't, if you don't quench that hunger or, or satisfy that hunger, I guarantee you you're going to find something else to do on Tuesday night and pretty soon you won't be doing what you were doing anymore. Amen. And on Saturday night, how many of y'all had a set night to do your homework? <laughs> Am I the only one? What are you going to do on those nights? I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. If you're not real careful, you're going to get complacent. Amen. You're going to lose that desire and you're going to lose that hunger because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I see leaders all the time. I got leaders in this ministry that have lost their desire and lost their hunger for the word of God. They quit pursuing God and they got complacent. And then when trouble comes, they stick their hand in the sand. They're not hungry anymore. Okay, Sarah, Sarah. You've got to have a fire burning inside of you, a desire burning inside of you. You've got to have a creative spirit inside of you that's always looking and striving to go that extra mile. I'm look, when I go to Africa this year, when I come here tonight, I'm looking for an explosive service. I'm looking for even bigger and better than ever before. I guarantee you I'm going to give it all I got. Does that make sense? Are you hungry for it or are you complacent? Are you just going to go to the status quo or are you going to go for it even more than you did before? Because now you have an understanding, right? Are you hungry? Do you want more? You want more? You want more, Rachel? You want more? You want more, Sabrina? 
Huh? The enemy tries, he's trying to cut you out. He don't want you to go. He don't want you to go. But you gotta, you got to pursue him. you got to desire. you got to get hunger for him. Amen. You, when you start hungering for him more than anything else in this world, then everything else falls in place. Somebody said that uh, the man that was up here taking the offering, I can't remember his name. Larry. J- Jerry. He talked about David dancing because he was so excited. David had everything, but guess what? He was still pursuing God. And his little rich, stuck-up wife, amen, thought he was too undignified. He was undignified as a king because he, he done got like Lynch over there. He done got doing his dance. He danced so much he even came out of his clothes. She said, oh, David, you really look smart out there being a king. You know what? But David, you know why David was so blessed and why he was a man after God's own heart? He was always pursuing God. No matter how wealthy he got, no matter how blessed he was, no matter what came his way, he wanted to pursue God. He wanted more of what God had for him. And I'm going to tell you this. We as a ministry, we as believers in this house, if you don't get hungry for God and stay hungry for God, this ministry will go away. Well, let me say it. I ain't going away, but you may go away from the ministry. Because I'm going to continue to pursue him. You look around. Where are they? You know, Destiny does the march. You've been putting people, reminding people where they were three months ago. Four months ago, these people are celebrating victory. Hungry for God. Six months clean. Now, most of them don't went out and got back on it. Some, see, if we, the problem is, they ain't hungry no more. I got satisfied. I ate too much. Amen. Now I'm bloated and I don't need it no more. I already know everything. I don't know. I got my Holy Ghost. You know, Jesus loves me. I'm going to go out and do the old thing I used to do. Well, let me tell you. Remember what I talked about this morning? Remember? The enemy's just feeding you worms. Amen. He's feeding them to you a little bit at a time. You're nibbling, and, and he's not pulling. How many of y'all ever cast a, a fishing bowl out, and, and, and the fish eat the worm off, and you pull it back, and you're like, where did the worm go? Right? Well, that's what everybody's doing. See, the devil lets you do it. He lets you do it. He lets you nibble on it, nibble on it, nibble on it. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to let him nibble on it. And all the other fish are watching you nibble on it. And you, you're doing it a little bit at a time. And you're still feeling good. You still go to church. And you still do all the things you were doing. But all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the enemy sticks that worm on there. He casts out and you're, oh, it's a worm again. You know, it's easy. I'm going to go ahead and ask. I'm going to go ahead and get it. Well, this time, he's got everything. I, like I told you this morning, I caught the kitchen sink, right? He throws that thing in there again, and he's waiting because he knows he's got you now. You're not scared. You just walk up, start nibbling, and he yanks it, and he pulls you to shore, right? Remember, that's what takes place. See, they think it's okay right now. Everything's good. They're nibbling on the bait. Everything's happening. No problems at all. They're not hungry anymore. They don't really feel conviction right now. But guess what? There's a reckoning day coming. They got children. They got families. You understand? It's not God. But when they lose that desire and they lose that hunger, man, all that stuff goes away. Peace, love, joy, all of it. The only way you're going to get this is a desperate pursuit of what God is doing for us, that fire inside. It's ignited by God. Say it's ignited by God. But you know how it's carried out to the world? By cooperating in the Spirit, by cooperating in the Spirit with you. You have to be cooperating with it, Right? So if it's ignited by God, but carried through, carried with him, with him in the spirit, the satisfied people do this. What do the satisfied people do? They evaluate and they analyze. I've heard people that maybe used to come here or maybe used to be in church somewhere else, and they're always analyzing and critiquing everybody else. The satisfied people are critiquing. Why did they do this? Why did they do that? Why do they sing that song? Why does he do this? Blah, 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 blah. You know why? Because they're satisfied. They're satisfied where they're at. Status quo, everything's good. But the hungry are going like, man, I want to see it go further. What else can God do? That's it. The satisfied evaluate and analyze, they usually evaluate other people's worship experience, their teaching, and even their confession of hope. I've heard people I can't believe they're talking about that again. Amen. Have you ever seen that? When you hear somebody, I can't believe they had a service like that. Do you know then that they're, they're, they're spiritually, they're, they're done, right? Amen. They're, they're fat. They've ate too much. So it's sad to say some people wouldn't even have a ministry if they didn't critique others. 
right? Have you ever met people like that? People that are always critiquing and wondering why you do this or why you do that. Why? My, I had somebody tell me one time, they said, they said why do you, my parents, why do you take your kids to church all the time? Because I'm passionately pursuing Jesus, amen? I'm passionately pursuing them because I want them to passionately pursue Jesus also, amen? And they say, well, they don't get to do what other kids used to do. I'm going to tell you this. Barbara, you took yours too, amen? And I guarantee you all our kids turned out pretty good. You know, they may make goofy things at, at times, but they're all Holy Ghost filled, right? Amen? Right, Garrett? Amen? And they're still pursuing God. But people always, they would critique, why don't y'all go to church? Y'all have church all the time. Yeah, we have church all the time. It keeps me out of trouble. I need church. Why don't y'all go to Florida, the conferences all the time? Because I need to passionately pursue Jesus. Why don't you go to Africa when there's hungry people here? Because I got to passionately pursue Jesus. I can never let that, that, I can never let that hunger, I can never get satisfied. Because if I do, I'll lose my desire. You understand? I love cheeseburgers better than anybody until I get full. I love barbecue and Brunswick stew. Do I get full? I love Jesus and everything else. Do I get full? And when you get full, you get satisfied. What do you do when you get full? You take a nap. <laughs> when you slumber and sleep, the enemy slept, swept in, came in. He sowed wheat. He sowed tares among the wheat. Huh? But if I'm passionately pursuing him and I'm worshiping him, he don't know if I'm going to be in Africa. He don't know if I'm going to be over there, if I'm going to be here. He don't know where I'm going to stand. He don't know what I'm going to pray. He don't know how I'm going to worship. He don't know who I'm going to hit water with that day. Amen. Because I'm going to be one step. I'm going to be always hungry and one step ahead of him. And I'm going to tell you this. If you invite me to your house and you got food, and y'all say the blessing, y'all standing around, I'll be the first one in line. We had a church here the other night. They had a birthday, they were having a birthday gig, right? And somebody said the blessing. And I was like, is there a line? And they go, Bishop, there ain't nobody in line. I said, well, heck with this, this is crazy, man. I oh, ain't got me a burger. We got two burgers, right? Amen. But what I'm saying is, you've got to have that desire. You should be the first in line. You shouldn't have to wait on Lynch. You shouldn't have to wait on Sabrina. You shouldn't have to wait on Christina. You should be coming here passionately pursuing Jesus every single day. You should be the one that is so on fire for God. You should be so on fire for God that we cannot help but see that you're passionately pursuing Jesus. That you're spiritually hungry. I, I just seen it in you the other day when you came in. Bishop, I quit my job. I'm ready to volunteer more here. God's blessed us so much, I don't even need it. <laughs> so I want to pursue him even more and thank him even more. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? That we just passively pursue him, that we got so much that we can quit and we still being blessed. Right, Joel? Joel left. Joel, see, I caught you. You left. But you can passionately pursue him, and you can live on one income when you, even when you didn't think you could. Right? People are known today. For not, they're, they're not known for what they believe. They're known for what they oppose. Right? They have no history of igniting or sowing into moves of God. Instead, most people are known for critiquing the meal that others enjoy. Amen? I don't like that supper stuff that Bishop's serving up. Well, good. Amen. Go somewhere else and find something else. But we serve good rolls here. We eat well. And I promise you this. You come here, I'm going to give it my very best. Amen. I'm going to greet you. Amen. I'm going to serve you. And then I'm going I'm to say goodbye to you. Amen. And I'll take the tip at the end of the day. Come on, somebody. Right? Amen. This reminds me of, you ever heard of restaurant critics that don't even know how to cook? All these green beans just don't taste good. You ain't had a green bean in your life. You've been eating it out of a can. You need some, need some what do you, Mary, Mary, what we need? You need some fat back in there and some lard in there. You need about five pounds of it in there. And then you let it soak in there. And so, it all, you don't really have water in the green beans. You just got grease in there. And then it's good, right? Amen. I don't want to, you know, come on. I don't want that junk out of a can. It tastes like water. 
I want something that's got fat in it. I want, I, in fact, I want pieces of that. I mean, when you got when you got baked beans, if it ain't got a pound of bacon in it or five pounds of bacon in it, who wants that? But we got critics everywhere that don't even know what baked beans are. You ever been somewhere? <laughs> My boss just took me to a restaurant one time. Oh, it's it's awesome. It's it's gonna be phenomenal. And I order out the menu, and it's about $59 for, you know, and I'm like, you get a biscuit with this? They go, it's a la carte, sir. I said, a la who? who I, my wife's going to get mad at me telling the story. But I'm like, a la what? You got to order it. I said, order what? Bread. I said, well, I want bread. Okay, bread. Okay, does it come with a salad? It's a la carte, sir. I was like, a la carte? How much is the salad? Oh, it's $19. I was like, God, I'm glad I'm not paying for this. But okay. Clay, I kid you not. I kid you not. They bring me a plate out, and it's a $100 meal, right? I'm expecting, I'm expecting some kind of angel to come out with a, with a, with a, with a roll bone or something and just say, ha, ha, ha. You know, the bit, I was expecting. You see them shows where they have the biggest steak in the world, and they bring out a pound of salad and stuff like that? No, I'm kidding you all not. There was a piece of green stuff on the side that was bigger than my steak. They, they caught, what do they call it? It was, uh, no, it wasn't kale, but it was that little green thing. Garnishment of some kind. I kid you not, that $59 steak was that big around, and everybody was pretending that they liked it. <laughs> I, I, I'm serious, Garrett. I thought it was an appetizer, right? I, it wouldn't even be enough to be an appetite. I, I kid y'all not, I, I went home and ate the whole house. because I, I said, I ate the $100 meal, and I didn't get full. No wonder these rich people are skinny, because they ain't got no food. <laughs> and that's what people are getting in church. They got the fancy buildings, the fancy music, the fancy coffee. There ain't nothing wrong with it. I ain't, I'm down with it, amen. But if you ain't got no Holy Ghost, and you ain't got no pursuit, and you ain't got no Big Macs, and you ain't got no pe- I'll give me a... I'm going to tell you what I should have done. I should have called Domino's and got me a pizza. I've been better off. Oh, yeah, and praise the Lord. They gave me a piece of bread that was smaller than a piece. It was, it was that big. And it was so hard that it fell into a million pieces. So my buddy, there was some bread on the table. It looked softer than mine. So I thought it was for the table. So I grabbed me a piece of bread, and he said, that's mine. I said, what's yours? He said, the bread. I said, oh, I'm sorry. I was going to put it back. Oh, and did y'all know this? If you order appetizers with rich people, if you order appetizers, Joel, you ain't going to believe this. If there's one left, nobody's supposed to take it. There was one left. The best thing about this meal was whatever that appetizer was. So there was one left. I thought, since this steak is that big around, I'm still starving. I'll just get the last appetizer. Guy sitting there, he tapped me leg. He's, you don't eat the last one. Is it poisonous? I was like, I was young. I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? But that's the way it is in church today. All right, I'll just eat a little bit. Don't need that. No one at all. I mean, I want a buffet. I want every, I want a cruise ship that's got it's got chicken. It's got it's got. I want everything, and that's the way I want my church. And if I don't go to a church that's got that, and then I'm not hungry and I'm not passionately pursuing it, I'm not going back. That makes sense. I'm sorry, I'm on my food tangent. Y'all not gonna let me preach tomorrow on Sunday nights. But it reminds me of restaurant critics that can't even cook. There's so many people critiquing our worship and critiquing what you are and who you are. People critique, why are you going to Africa? Hmm? Right? Why are you going to Peru? Is that where we went? Peru, yeah. Why did you sign up for IBTC? Hmm? Why did you do what? Yeah, why are you going to Fort Deer? Because you're pursuing, right? Because you know what? It keeps you busy and it keeps you out of trouble, right? Come on, I ain't going to lie. I study, and if I didn't study to show myself approved, I'd get in trouble probably. I'd get lazy, right? I don't want to get lazy. I don't want to get complacent. I don't want to get, I, I, want, to, I, want, I want to be so hungry. I'm, I'm telling you, I am so geeked up every time we come to church. I can't stand myself. And I know my wife has a hard time containing me. She's like, calm down. 
I get excited about food. And I get excited about the Holy Spirit. Right? They're two in the same. Faith has a different approach. <laughs> Because I know after I leave here, I'm going to go eat. That makes me happy. It makes me happy. <laughs> I know when I come to church, that Sabrina and her team is going to get up here and they're going to make me happy. Christine and her team is going to make me happy. I yell at them. I yell at her today. It's just like a waitress. Bring more food. Bring more food. Have you ever went, have you ever went to like an all-you-can-eat place? Yeah, just a, no, where they serve you, and you're like, oh, you can eat ribs or catfish. And, and, and you order, and they bring you three, and you're like, you might as well, you might as well go ahead and bring some more. And they bring one. <laughs> no, don't bring one, bring, bring more. We go to Maggiano's, fried zucchini sticks, right, Sabrina? You know, they got now where they, they'll bring you two out, and there's 20 people at the time. I'm like, dude, you better go ahead and go cook a whole basket of those things, because I'm going to quit and keep ordering them. Don't bring me two. If it's all you can eat, I want more. See, some churches advertise that's all you can eat, but really, they're trying to cut you off. I ain't going to cut you off. I'm going to serve you everything you want, then some, and I'll give you some more. And if you run out, I'll go cook some more. Amen? That makes sense? And Garrett's the same way. He'll cook you some more, too. Bring me out two pieces of daggum catfish. Me and Joel ate about 100 one night. You remember that, Joel? Joel's like, he laughed. They brought him out the first place. He's like, ha, ha, ha. He said, y'all better go cook some more, a whole lot more. <sighs> so faith has such a different approach to the truth, right? Yes. Is deception a concern for sure? Is deception in people deceiving people? It is, okay? The devil does exist. I know that. I believe that. But faith expressed in hunger is much more convinced of God's goodness and his promise to satisfy than it is in the devil's ability to steal, kill, and destroy. So well, let me explain this. So I'll just express it in hunger. And faith expressed in hunger is a whole lot better and a whole lot more desirable than the devil's attempt to try to steal, kill, and destroy from me. Does that make sense? Amen. Because if I'm passionately pursuing Jesus and I'm healthy and, I, and I'm, I, 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 I'm going this way, then the enemy has, it, it trumps. It trumps anything the devil tries to do to me if I'm passionately pursuing him. Does that make sense? I can tell you right now, when you stop passionately pursuing Jesus, you're going to get in trouble, right? Or you quit doing what God's telling you to do. He's listen to this. The hungry, become, the hungry become preoccupied by the one, Jesus Christ. When you're hungry, you're preoccupied with one thing. I'm not preoccupied. I ain't got time for no silly people, no goofy people. I don't have time for no shenanigans because I'm preoccupied by the one. Hungry people are preoccupied by the one. Spiritually full, satisfied people are preoccupied by everything. Let's critique it all. Why did this happen? What did this happen? That ain't what the Bible said. The Bible said don't, don't try to figure it out. The Bible says cast all my cares upon him. Humble myself. Cast all my cares upon him. Trust him and passionately pursue him and let all the chips fall where they may. Right? Amen? But, but did Jesus die? Is he coming back on the cross to die again for your sins? Do you forgive them all once and for all? Garrett preached on this the other night. Here it is. He's available. Jesus is available to those who pursue with reckless abandon. Is he not? People say, people always say this. And I preached on this the other day. I'm waiting on God. Can I tell you a secret? Are you, how many born again people we got in here? You wait? Okay. If you're, the only time God's going to pursue you is before you get saved. After that, he's, you got to pursue him. I don't believe it. I'm just telling I'm, People always tell me and say, see, we heard the voice of God. You wouldn't know the voice of God if he, if he came down here and, and said, stick your finger in my side. Usually people that tell, when people tell me they've heard the voice of God tell them to do something, nine times out of ten they did. You know how I know? Because they're not passionately pursuing Jesus. You know how I know? Because they disappear. When you call them, you go, hey, where are you at? Oh, I'm just hearing the voice of God. No, you're not because you've heard the voice of God. Does God ever work out of disorder? He only works in order. So in order would be that you don't slink off and hide, right? You'd be passively pursuing Jesus going, hey, Bishop, 
my name, you know, while you, I've been here, going over here for two years, and me and Lil are really doing good, but we really feel the, we feel the power of God leading us to go do something else, and that's what we want to do. And you're not leaving, praise God. I'm using this example, guys. I'm not, prophe- I'm not prophesying, okay? Don't take it as a prophecy. But, but Bishop, I love you, and you want know, to say, Wally, let me pray about it, and I'm going to come back. We, Wally, I feel really the same way. I bless that. I honor that. You go on and do your great things in the kingdom of God. That's the way you do it, right? Because you're always passionately pursuing him. You're always hungry for him. Usually when people hear the voice of God, that means they quit. <laughs> I've heard the voice of God. No, you, you should say, I quit. Amen? Because none of us have ever wanted to throw up our hands and quit, right? Huh? I'm almost done. Jesus comes with the ability to keep you safe, right? Through faith... You can lean, everybody say, lean into. Come on, everybody stand up. Even you, Pastor Stacy. <laughs> Gotta stand up. What's that? Oh, don't be rebellious. Through faith. Through faith, you can lean into. Come on, lean into any situation, right? Come on, can't you? Fully expecting God to speak and give you direction. Do you know when you get in trouble? You know when you get in trouble? Is when you don't lean into it. Huh? When you don't submit to him and you give over to him. You know what I mean? That's casting your cares. Let me lean in. I'm on, how many of y'all ever said this? I'm going to fix it myself. Mm. Every time I got in trouble is when I didn't lean into him and allow him, allow him to have it. And whenever I get in trouble is when I lose that hunger and I lose that desire. That's when you get in trouble. That's when you get like, that's when the messages get stale. Amen. Y'all get tired of me if my messages got stale. What if I tell, y'all like stale bread? <laughs> like, when you go to the grocery store, do you just pick the one up that's the hardest? You pick up the freshest, right? I don't even know why I do this, but when I pick up fruit, I thump it. You know, it's like, it makes me feel good, right? And I hope for the best. But I, you know, I want fresh. I want it fresh. How many of y'all want to eat some pickles that were expired? I don't, right? <laughs> if you, have you ever looked in the refrigerator and you're like, hmm, it's so old you can't even read the expiration date? Throw it away, right? But you got to lean into those situations. Are we hungry? Do y'all want to see more? Do you desire more for your life? Sabrina, come on, get a song. How many know we're going to lean into we're going to lean into him and we're going to believe him? You got troubles. Everybody's got troubles, right? Everybody's got trials. Everybody has things going on. But we're believing God. I'm believing God tonight for you. I'm believing God for some of you tonight that are lost. Some of you tonight that need to be delivered. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly greater than you can even imagine. I'm telling you, God wants to move in your life, and I want to see you passionately pursue Him like you never have before. You know, I was telling you today. You know, through everything, just keep pursuing Him. Keep believing God. Give it all to Him and serve Him like you never have before and watch what God will do. Because you can't carry it, but He can. Come on, man. Lean in. I like my new people. Evelyn. Amen. Come on. Lean in too. It's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. It's going to be okay, Aunt Mary. It's going to be all right, right, prophet? Come on. That's prophet, man. He's like Elijah back there. Amen? So while we sing tonight, if you need prayer, the altar's open. I want you to have a desire and to be as hungry. I want you to be as hungry as you've ever been for God. Our nation needs it. Your family needs it. The kingdom of God really needs this. We need to take back ground that's been taken away. And I truly believe that a small group of people can change the earth. And you, it's always a small group of people that change the earth. So why not us? Why not us? We can have an impact. I believe a no, somebody can win a Nobel Peace Prize from here. You never know. Remember the little lady that started organizing a walk? And, and they, they threw bottles. And they shut her down. I can't remember her name. I'm drawing a blank. But the next week she went out with 30,000 people and changed the course of a whole nation. And she won the Nobel Peace Prize. She was a housewife. I'm going to tell you this. I truly believe God has great things for each one of you. Every single person here, from the newest to the oldest. 